We're gonna try this again. I was on a minute ago and people were saying they couldn't hear. So I'm gonna wait just a minute and see if you can hear me now. Oh, I hope it works. I don't know why it did that. I restarted my phone, so let's see if that will work. Okay. Hi, if you can hear me, will you let me know in the comments? Can you hear me? Please let me know. Thanks. Gem is on. Hey Gem, can you hear me? Okay. Hi, I'm Jamie. You can hear me. Okay, good. I don't know why. I just did like two minutes and people were saying they couldn't hear. Oh good, all right, we're good to go. I'll start over. Hi, I'm Jamie, yay. Okay, from Play to Learn Preschool, and I'm here to answer your most asked question. Um, since we started doing the Facebook Live videos about three weeks ago, the question that I get the most on Facebook, on um, my blog, and through email is always, can you tell me about your daily schedule? So that's what I'm gonna share with you this afternoon. Our students are here um, just for about three hours a day in the mornings. They come at 8.45 and they leave around noon. Three days a week with my pre-K students, I let them stay for an extra hour until one o'clock for a little lunch bunch. Um, and I'll talk about that on another day. But for the most part, they are here for three hours and 15 minutes. My pre-K students are the ones who will start kindergarten next fall. So they are four years old and they have a kindergarten entry date of fall 2017. They stay three mornings a week and then I have a different group of students who are three years old and they stay just two mornings a week. So that's how our day or how our week is laid out and then I'm gonna walk you through what we do during the day. So it sounds like people can hear me. Hi from San Diego. Hi from the UK. Hi everybody. Okay good. I think we're good to go now. I don't know what happened that first time. I'm sorry about that. Um, all right. So uh, I was saying too that I wrote on my website last night, I printed off um, our daily schedule. It looks like this. And you can click on the PDF on my website and print it if you'd like to follow along or if you want to refer to it later. Um, this is the blog post that I wrote, how to create a half day preschool schedule. So if you go to playtolearnpreschool.us and find the blog post that looks like this, that's what I'm talking about today. So. Okay, on our wall, I have printed off this visual schedule. It's gonna be backwards because I'm on the selfie cam. These aren't backwards because I printed them in a mirror image, but I didn't redo the whole thing for you, so. This is what we have hanging on our wall, way back behind me in my circle time area for my students so that they have a visual reference to where we're, what we're doing during the day and what comes next. At the beginning of the year, we use this little star clip and we move it as we, as we go through the day. So they arrive, and then when they're doing their morning work, we'll move the star to morning work. When morning work is finished and it's time for us to do our circle time, we move it to circle time. Then we move it to centers so that they can kind of get an idea of how many more things we have to do before it's time to go home, which is a really big deal when they're three because especially the first couple of weeks of school, they're like, how long exactly are you keeping us here? And so I can show them, well, First we have to work at our centers and then you can go potty, we'll eat snack, we'll get all cleaned up, we'll play outside, I'll read you a story and then your mom comes to take you home. And so they can kind of see like how many more things we have to get through before um, it's time to go home. So I'm gonna just talk through each of the stages of our schedule. So like I said, this is a, I made it as a PDF so you could print it if you'd like. Um, just to have as a reference. But I would suggest that um, this schedule works for me, for my time period, for my students, for my classroom, and for what we have to get done. Um, but it's not gonna work for you probably because you have different students, different hours, different a different setup. Um, you might be um, required to have meals at a certain time or, you know, there's lots of different things. Maybe you have a staggered arrival time, they can come anywhere between seven and eight or something like that. So I've put some guidelines on my website for making your own schedule, but I do just wanna encourage you that you're the expert in your classroom. You're the one who knows what's working. You're the one who knows your students. You're the one who needs to look at your day and say, these parts of my day are working really well, let's keep it. 
or this part of my day is not working as well, how can I adjust it? And there's no way anybody else can do that for you. There's no Pinterest um, graphic or website or anything that can give you those answers. You really have to be the expert with your students in your classroom. Now I'm just gonna talk you through what works for me and then if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. So when our students arrive, we actually have them take off their shoes. Here, see here in my house, you see I've got this really light carpet. Um, hi everybody. So they take off their shoes and their backpack and if they're wearing a jacket and hang them in their little lockers. And then they go down to the carpet and we have some kind of a morning work activity for them. I've shared the, what, we, what we do with the younger kids. We shared that last week. They have a name activity. This month in September here at the beginning, it's matching the letters of their name on the carpet and then they put it back. It takes just a minute. Something for them to do while everybody's getting their shoes off. Later in the week, I'm gonna show you what we do with our older kids who've already mastered their names. We do folder games with them. And so I'm gonna share those with you on Wednesday. Um, and so there, it's just about three to five minutes for them to come in, do their little arrival morning work activity while everybody's getting settled. And then as soon as I have everybody here and the shoes are off and they've done their morning work, then we move into this morning meeting circle time. I did a video, I don't know if it was a week or two ago, but if you search for um, name songs for circle time, that kind of talks about how we break our circle times into three mini circle times during the day. This first one lasts no more than 10 minutes and it's just a little morning meeting. We sing a hello song to all of the students who are in the circle, and I shared those with these name songs that we sing with our students um, each morning. And we check the snack chart, because you know that's really important, what we're having for snack that day. I have a class puppet that I'll have to introduce you to in another video. She comes out and says a little greeting to them. And then I just take a minute to show one or maybe two centers um, that I'd like them to try in the classroom. If it's the first month of school and I'm trying to teach them how to use the watercolor paints, I might demonstrate that at that morning meeting circle time. Or if I have something new in the science center that they've never seen, I might bring it over just as a way of introduction. But by 9:10, our circle time is finished and we have planned almost two hours of center time for our students. So from 9, 10 until 11 a.m., they get center time is what we call it. Um, I think that there's different names for it depending on where you're located. Um, but what's really important to me about this time is that our students have free choice of which centers they want to move at, move to, excuse me. We might suggest where they start, um, but they are free to move at their own pace and at their own will throughout the classroom. I think that's really important because um, isn't it the pits if you're in the middle of doing something and you're really into it and then all of a sudden somebody comes and says, time's up. And so I think that's what happens if we're timing our students or we say, you get 15 minutes, you get 10 minutes, we're gonna rotate through the centers. Just about the time they get settled in and figure out what they're going to do is the time when you might say, all right, time's up. And then they're gonna be still, ah, you know, they might move, but their brain is still thinking about the center they were at just a minute ago. And so I think it's really important that we give our students time to settle into their centers, to really delve into what they're doing. Um, and if they're really involved in it, to let them carry out and execute whatever ideas they have. If they're building some kind of a huge block structure with signs and people and roads, they might not be able to finish that in 10 or 15 minutes. So we let them move at their own pace. Um, we also allow them um, to kind of negotiate the space on their own. So if like this round table behind me, I think right now we have six chairs at it. And so if everybody wants to be at that table and there's not space, um, you know, people are standing or they can't, can't itch in, inch in, then we might say to them, like, it looks like this space is too crowded. Could you pick another center and come back? But I don't have a sign that says only six kids may play here or in the block area, only three kids can play here. Um, because I think that's an important part of the learning process as well. If you come to a group and there's eight kids playing in this tiny little area or trying to listen to the same book and you can't fit in, I would rather them figure out 
I need to figure I need to pick another center and then go back to that one rather than me always being there to give them the solution to their problem to say no there were only four kids allowed at that center I think that figuring out the space negotiating the supplies and the space um, and solving their own problems especially during this free center that's where the real learning takes place in preschool not with a pencil and a paper. The real learning takes place when they try to understand how to work with each other in these social situations. So that's my little soapbox moment, um, but that's how we do it. They are allowed to move at their own free will. They are permitted to stay as long or as short as they want. It doesn't actually matter to me if they pick the same center every day. Um, I listened to a really fantastic speaker one time, um, a really well-known, um, leader in early childhood education in the field and she said I don't care if my students choose blocks every day I can teach them everything they need to learn in the block center and I really took that to heart a long time ago and thought you know what we should be able to meet all of their needs no matter which center they're working at and so um, if they're picking blocks every day but they're playing nicely they're um, interacting socially they're creating new things they might be writing or reading books about different structures. Who am I to say they shouldn't do that every day, honestly? Um, so it's okay with me if they pick the same center. I do try to make other centers really enticing. So for example, if I have students who never go to the math center, I might put Fruit Loops or something that they can't say no to at that center. Um, it makes our job a tad bit harder to make every center or make those less desirable centers really appealing to our students, but I take that challenge um, as part of my job. So if I have students who never go to, to the math center, I think maybe I need to put those math manipulatives in a sensory bin. They need that sensory experience while they're doing math. Or um, maybe I need to put something a little bit flashier at the math center so that they'll want to come over and explore. So, um, so that's my opinion on letting them move. We do take a break in the middle of center time. They don't have to clean up. We just say we're gonna stop. We're gonna push the pause button for a minute. Um, we only have nine students and it's easier, but only one bathroom. So we take everybody to the bathroom and let them wash their hands. And then when their hands are washed, they come back down to the carpet for me, with me, excuse me. Gemma usually does the bathroom for that part and I usually do this circle time. And we have this mid-morning circle time, which I've talked about um, a lot. So this is the one where we um, do some kind of a thematic mini lesson. If it's about apples, it might be that wiggly worm that I described in the um, circle time activities last week, but we do that this mid-morning. So everybody's gone to the bathroom and washed their hands. Miss Super Gemma usually comes over and sets up the snack, it's the drinks and everything ready for them, and I do a little mini lesson on the circle time. Again, it's no more than about five or 10 minutes, not very long. And then we move and eat snack together. And we'll talk about that in another video. But we have tried to create a snack time routine that fosters a lot of independence for our students so they can pour their own drinks and serve their own snacks. Um, when they're finished, they ask to be excused. They just say, please, may I be excused? And they clean up their own dishes and trash and then get right back to work at centers. So fortunately, the way that our room is set up, it's not a separate area. I'm sitting here at our snack tables, but when um, they're finished with their snack, they actually can just go right back and we can still see them. And they, a lot of them will get right back to work with whatever they were doing. So if they had started something at the art easel and they were painting a really neat picture, they finish their snack, they're excused, and then they go right back and finish what they were working on. It's just really a little break. Um, all of the, those mini lessons I meant to say during the mid-morning circle time are these that I showed you when we were talking about our, our um, thematic boxes. So um, there are all the things that I write in those thematic units. So whatever the circle time lesson is, you know, I write like the circle time lessons. That's what I'm doing during that mid-morning circle time. So they go back and finish their centers until about 11 o'clock. We always give them a five minute warning before cleanup. That's really important because if your students really are engaged with what they're doing and then all of a sudden, oh, time to clean up, 
um, you're gonna have a hard time, or we'll always have a hard time if we forget to give them the warning, um, getting them to actually clean up because they're still thinking about what they were working on. They haven't had time to sort of slow it down and finish up. So we give them a five minute warning. I play the little Barney cleanup song. We actually have, I think there's five songs on our cleanup playlist and we try to finish cleaning up before all five songs have played on the iPod. Um, so they clean up their centers and Ms. Gem and I try to clean up the snack tables and the art or whatever we've got that's a mess. And as soon as the cleanup is ready, then they put on their shoes and we line up on our little footprints on the floor to go outside for recess. We actually have two different outdoor spaces, um, sort of an outdoor classroom space in the back that I'll show you sometime. And then sometimes we also um, ride bikes and do gross motor bikes and balls and things um, in the front, which I don't think I'll show you, but I'll show you the back area. Um, we do that until about 11.40, 11.37, and then come in. I read them a story. Our older pre-K kids, I also do some kind of a, a little <clears throat> literacy or math or rhyming or comprehension um, activity right before we read. If it's I'll introduce a vocabulary word that's going to be in the book or we practice writing um, letters on the whiteboard, something, again, not too long. Um, but then I read them a story that usually goes with our theme and at noon they put their backpacks on their shoes are already on because they came in from recess and we didn't take them off. And then it's time for them to go home. So it's a quick morning most of the time. <laughs> and um, I think it's really important in creating the schedule that we take a step back and look to make sure that we have a nice balance between seated activities and movement activities. So for example, we wouldn't want to go straight from snack time where they're sitting straight to story time where they're sitting. Um, we want to give them kind of alternating activities. You can move around and make a lot of noise. You have to sit and kind of be quiet. You can be really active. You have to be a little bit more subdued. Um, the teacher's in charge or you get to pick your own activity. We alternate those activities to try to create a balanced day so that, um, so that it runs smoothly. We'll talk on, on another video about some of the transition tips that we use to get our students um, seated for circle time and then the transition that we use to move them to centers. I talked a little bit about the cleanup transition. Um, I know this probably will not work for you. Somebody says you can't use this timetable. I know. That's what I kind of said at the beginning. This works for me. And so you're going to have to find one that works for you. There's no way that somebody else can write a schedule for you. So hopefully I can give you enough um, tips and tricks and tell you what works for me but every teacher is going to have to be the expert for their own classroom for their own students and for their own day and write their own schedule I really think that's something that nobody else even your director can't really do for you so that's our schedule in a nutshell um, art time is during centers so they can always do painting at the easel we have a little creation station with scrap paper and glue and scissors and tape and crayons and markers, which I'll show you on another day. And then a lot of times we'll also have set up some type of a process art project over here on one of the snack tables. That's a good question. But we don't all sit and do like a craft project or anything together. Um, how many centers do I have available each day? It's about eight. Um, some of them are the big ones, like dramatic play, blocks, um, the library or the book nook area and the art easel. And then some of them change. Um, oh, and the sensory table is a big one. And then some of them change, like the tabletop center right behind me, that yellow circle table, um, the light table, and then I have a little kidney shaped table um, with some kind of an invitation to play on the top. So I will show you all of those centers when we do our big classroom tour, which is going to be on Monday, October 10th at one o'clock Eastern. So I will show you um, all of the centers. So, all right, I think I've got all the questions. So that's it. Um, feel free to pop over to my website um, and find this post, which is called How to Create a Half Day Preschool Schedule, which will give you some suggestions and guidance for making your own schedule that will work for you. And if, um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them here and I'll come back um, this afternoon and try to answer them. Tomorrow, I'm gonna show you what we have set up for our week four centers. 
here at Play to Learn. And on Wednesday, I will talk to you more about the pre-K morning work, what we have our five, four and five year olds doing for morning work. We do not have afternoon students. Look, I'm here. Ah, look, no kids. Look, Ma, no kids. Uh, no, they all leave by 12 o'clock or one o'clock, half day only, yeah. Okay, if you do have a full day, um, on my Facebook page, there were people who were writing in suggestions for how to change this full day or this half day schedule to full day. So scroll back through um, and you'll be able to see some of those suggestions. They were really good. Okay, I think that's it. Thanks everybody. See you tomorrow for information about um, the centers we have set up and Wednesday for pre-K morning work. I hope you have a lovely afternoon and have fun playing and learning with your kids today. Bye everybody.